So this last um, round table, this fourth leg of the table, as I have defined it, we're going to do it with our two next guests, CEO and President of Accenture, Isili Fabio Benasso, on the one side, and Carlo Messina, CEO of Intesa San Paolo, on the other. Good morning to both of you. So I will get to the point, as I was anticipating. I want to understand what can finance do to be sustainable, and on the other, and here, I'm more concerned with the intervention of uh, Mr. Messina. How is important in the evaluation of a banking group the fact that a uh, company on which you are assessing credit has sustainability uh, requirements, not only in terms of attention by the stakeholders, but also marketing operations? So I would like to start with you, uh, Dr. Benasso, because sometimes we're talking about fine, um, sustainable finance, and it's sometimes a paradox. Um, although we have heard the vice president of Lavazza when he talked about the fact uh, of uh, sustainability in their company, packaging, supply chain, etc. This is very true for product, but as finance is immaterial from this point of view, the feeling is that it is more difficult to translate the concept of sustainability in finance. Actually, you are doing this, and how do you do it? How do you deal with the topic? Well, I would like to talk about three main topics three enablers or accelerators of sustainable finance. The first is technological innovation. We have already talked about it, but I would like to explain it a bit. Data, the second, and third is ISG uh, culture, which associated with uh, experiences and talents. We've seen before that the adoption of new sustainable models is fed by the adoption of innovation as a central element. Technological innovation, so new technologies, new materials, and digital technology. The main element we have to think about which accelerates transformation in sustainable businesses is the awareness that um, regulation and finance have technology on their side at the moment, especially digital technology. We talked in Amos of transformation where we can combine digital transformation and sustainability in order to get out of the crisis and acquire competitive advantage. So in all of this, finance has a key role, plays a key role in terms of reading the outlook of transformation that operators are experiencing, trying to find the best performances and uh, capitals in real economy. Data have always been a central uh, part uh, in supporting the financial system and the sustainable performance. And I think this requires a new dialogue between um, industrial and financial actors in producing and monitoring new types of data that go beyond the traditional financial references that are currently used. So I think that in the future we will have to overcome some obstacles, uh, the lack of chronology, uh, finding um, uni univoc data that can be standardized to have a certainty of information that is very important in an evolving world because as models evolve, we need embedded in the system a capacity of adapting to new scenarios. With the acquisition of data, which is in the financial world an essential element to create scoring, rating, and ISG uh, models in order to assess the sustainability of counterparts and the development of risk-based models to assess potential uh, climate and environmental effects. So all of this to connect with digital technologies, which are great enablers. When we talk about beta or Internet of Things, blockchain, uh, 
and so forth, all these new technologies will be able to produce much, much data in real time where the capacity of modelization will be instrumental to produce the information I was referring to, but the other essential elements, essentially the capacity of looking forwards to have a predictive vision of how much the transformation is uh, accomplishing and where it is directed. The last uh, item I wanted to talk about is culture the uh, diffusion of a sustainable finance culture. I think this needs new talents, new profiles, new structures uh, compared to the traditional competencies in the financial world in order to really uh, make the most of strategic choices in terms of sustainability and evaluate their effect. So the main element here is a capacity of attract, include, and make these new competencies efficient and create a hybrid between these new competencies and the traditional ones. So I think that this en enriching the financial world will have a positive impact uh, on employment. And I think it's going to be very important to plan and integrate companies and systems and banks and training and the education world in order to produce new talents, but also to ensure this topic of online technologies and the challenges that we will have in the following years. I'm going back to you after Dr. Benassi, because I also want to understand a bit more about your awareness of the importance. We were talking about the end client before, but I think that this really helps companies in a journey that is not uh, mandatory, but it does have to move between um, economic sustainability parameters. Obviously, you have a correspondence in what is the general feeling and the public opinion. So I will go to uh, Mr. Messina now, and then after I will ask you, uh, how important is in your credit checks to assess a company that is sustainable and that has activities that are directed to sustainability? So I would like to ask the president of Intesa San Paolo, what is the group doing? I know you have a lot of limitations in terms of regulations. There are costs. Of course, also the costs must be sustainable for a sustainable finance. But what are you doing as a group to increase the degree of your sustainability? Thank you. I will elaborate on the banking and credit worthiness components later on. These aspects of sustainability are topics uh, that apply across businesses, uh, regardless of the business you do. M the majority of listed companies uh, worldwide uh, are under strong pressures uh, by their shareholders uh, to be more and more sustainable. They need to take an approach that considers uh, ESG topics as important. Uh, the large companies on the capital markets, uh, in Presa San Paolo, is a stock value of 45 million euro, and it's one of the top three banks in the Eurozone in terms of uh, stock value. 70% of our shareholders are international shareholders. So, so regardless of the business uh, in which you work, a company that has the size and stock value as uh, Sao Paulo's uh, cannot disregard social responsibility and ESG issues. The majority of international investors make their portfolio choices not only based on the company's results, which are uh, undeniably important uh, to decide where you invest, but also they decide based on the approach that every bank and every company takes uh, to ESG issues. Uh, in particular, Sao Paulo has an additional factor to attract investments uh, in these areas. Uh, and it goes back to the origin and DNA of Impresa Sao Paulo. Because this attitude, this approach, 
towards sustainability must translate also into the actions taken by the company by the people working for the company. We are more than 100,000 people working for the group. If not everyone working in a group um, had a sustainable approach, we would not be one of the champions uh, worldwide in terms of sustainability indexes. Let me make uh, a couple of examples uh, that I believe are the most significant and indicative of the approach taken by the bank. Today, Impresa San Paolo is the company and the Italian player that is probably implemented in the largest pro uh, project against uh, poverty. In the last couple of years, uh, we've given uh, more than 17 million meals uh, to people in need. And you know, I think that the previous speakers also said that today in our country there is a social emergency. There is a poverty emergency. One of the most important things that we have to face countrywide is the poverty emergency. And the data that were published a few days ago by the Bank of Italy indicate 40% of Italians find it difficult to pay their rent. If you look at the people standing in line before characters of, before soup kitchens, uh, it's impressive. For two years now, we are providing a lot of support in terms of feeding people in need. At the same time, we help students to pay for their studies. We offer zero interest rate loans to students uh, with very long repayment uh, deadlines. Uh, last year, at the beginning of the pandemics, uh, we were the first worldwide uh, donating 100 million euro. It was the biggest uh, donation from the European banking world. We donated to the healthcare sector, to health uh, measures. Uh, so it was not a loan, it was a donation. The top managers of the bank donated 6 million euro to the healthcare sector. All employees of the bank are involved in these social projects. So sustainability is something that certainly concerns the owners of a company because today large investors decide to invest in companies that support community, especially if companies have a good reputation that becomes a prerequisite for invest international investors to invest. On the other side, you have to have uh, uh, people who cooperate within the company. In our bank, there is a lot of focus, a lot of awareness of uh, social issues poverty and the environment. We were the first bank worldwide to become financial partners of MacArthur Foundation, which is the leader in circular economy worldwide. It studies projects and financial instruments to support circular economy. We allocated 50 million euro of plafond for green economy. So. The world of finance, in my opinion, is a pillar of sustainability. As far as we are concerned, specifically, we are leaders in social sustainability in this country. And this component is part of the DNA of our 100,000 employees who do their share to support people in need in our country. Thank you very much, Mr. Messina, because you strongly introduce the topic of social sustainability. So far, we've talked about sustainability from an energetic viewpoint, mobility, innovation, and environmental sustainability, because often sustainability is connected with environmental issues. Not that it is not important, but as you correctly said, this specific time in history places a social emergency at the top of priority, so there's a strong need to support what is still holding, but just uh, hardly holding. So there is an emergency brought about uh, by the pandemics, and this is a social emergency. And you 
correctly referred to it. Uh, it's not a ranking, of course, uh, but there is an objective uh, emergency of social nature. Mr. Benasso, uh, you, you, you do a lot of uh, advisory activities, and your partners are companies. And, but do you also notice uh, in the public opinion, do you notice that there is uh, better awareness on this topic among the general public. So do you have more leeway in explaining to companies that it's not just a marketing position or a marketing uh, um, operation, but something more deeper, more structural? Well, certainly today there is a wide awareness from many stakeholders in the world of consumers, we think about the new generations, there is a, a clear and growing attention to these topics, to trust, to sustainability. There are clusters of population that have incomes and can recognize premium prices to products and services that are indeed sustainable. So I think there are the elements that, that the different ecosystems are really growing this awareness. And I think this is an extraordinary theme that really brings us to an essential transformation in which companies are stimulated to change because there are new regulations that intervene in the deep transformation of these issues. And this helps you in your task or not? Because I don't know if you followed the first part of uh, today's work, so we were thinking about the circular element as the most virtuous element. If you understand the trend and you are a consultant, you can understand the trend. But if you also have a feedback that comes from the end client and from the economic environment in which you operate, this should make things easier. Yes, certainly. I think that in the Italian outlook, there are two different scenarios. One is the large companies, the bigger companies with a lot of uh, resources and capacities that can invest in human capabilities, uh, in managerial capabilities to build a new future and transform their business in a sustainable business at 360 degrees. And these are the companies that uh, really, uh, you know, talk about supply chain and ecosystems and so they are front runners, and they really accompany the systemic transformation of their world, their partners, their supply chains. This is very important. This is an element that really stimulates because the large companies help the small companies to grow and adapt. We have the Italian reality here where 90% is made of SMEs. So not everyone can benefit from this type of approach. And often, a big clients uh, create bigger challenges. So obviously, we have to think about this and what role finance can have, especially in terms of building infrastructures and platforms that could enable cluster supply chains of small and medium enterprises to transform by uh, having them access um, in a view of sharing new capabilities that allow small and medium enterprises to transform in sustainable enterprises. So I think this is very important. We've talked about innovation, but I think innovation develops where there is knowledge. So around these ecosystemic uh, supply chains, there are new ideas. We need some plug-in sort of platforms as multipliers, enablers of deployment of innovative uh, elements uh, so that small companies can grow. I think I think this is a systemic element that is very important for Italy, especially in terms of 
the idea of uh, facing the new challenges in a systemic way. So these are the large issues that are going to redesign lots of different supply chains and are going to create new things. So it's important to plan the future, to do scale investments, to create more impact. I think this is one of the challenges that the system has to tackle and the central element is the coupling of finance and transformational terms uh, of development that are relevant for the next few years. Mr. Messina, Dr. Benassa was saying uh, something before, without mentioning cliches, there, was, there is a, a truth in the difference between large companies and small companies and the role of large groups, not only banking groups for um, really uh, the awareness of the whole supply chain. I've seen sometimes uh, people who were quite surprised, um, companies that were quite surprised in understanding the um, connection between credit worthiness and environmental and um, social sustainability, because sometimes people say, yes, but the sustainability of my bank is a financial one, so return on investment, raw, etc. So this doesn't mean that we have to touch the fundamentals of the budget, but how do you pragmatically assess the sustainability of a company? Uh, do you go in the territory where they uh, operate, uh, stakeholders, CSR, uh, environmental positions, so all the effects on the public opinion and the perception of the product itself? Is it something that is tangible, because we were talking about intangible assets once. What kind of assessments do you do? Well, sorry, first of all, I'd like to go back to the concept that I elaborated before in terms of the attention of international investors to sustainability and ESG issues, ISG issues and investments that are made. I think that uh, a very important forward to imagine for international investors to enter company capitals is capacity of income and general cash flow. Intesa Sao Paulo donated 100 million euros to the healthcare system and is um, allocating uh, loans with no uh, interest that is sustaining students, guaranteeing millions and millions of meals to family can do this because the income capacity is over 3 billion euros per year. So obviously you cannot imagine that these issues, um, you know, are, are so we can finance clusters of uh, ISG compliant financing because we have a income capacity that is sustainable and is demonstrated. So obviously we can destine, we can, uh, we can direct a component of our income to social problem and improving the conditions of the community. So there are sectors where uh, by operating through investments on regeneration of technology, the world of green economy, circular economy can improve their uh, ESG capacity. So this, these sector, in these sectors, this component is an important item to be uh, assessed in terms of credit worthiness. There are other components that can improve the perception. These are investment components on social and on the community, and they have a values as they are connected to cash flows that are generated from the company, but the uh, prerequisite here is always the SGs. If through this investment we improve the ability to generate income, we can improve, but in most cases, investment on ESG topics improves a complex of real and social economy, and it naturally translates uh, in a benefit for all companies operating in the context where these investments are made. So obviously, today, there are some indicators that are monitored to understand if there is an improvement 
in the world of impact on social economy, but it's very important to evaluate the ability to generate income because no bank would give financing just because there is a strong attention to green economy or circular economy um, in, in this or that company. So the ability to generate income is very important for the positioning on the market. Then we can improve uh, interest rate conditions and such because in the portfolio of the bank, having investments, financing that is finalized to guarantee sustainability is an improvement also of our rating from the point of view of the perception of our investors. So if our portfolio of financing is widened with financing that has a vision of sustainability, this absolutely uh, improves our position, our rating of sustainability, which is a, one of the variable that is attentively monitored by international investors who decide where to put their portfolios. So the ability to generate income is absolutely essential. Yes, it's very important what you just said, because on the one hand, you talked about a virtuous cycle. It's not only a virtuous cycle for your client, but also for the judgment that the investors have on your banking group when uh, there is this diversification on sustainable uh, companies. So it's a win-win situation, as they say in English. The client wins, but you win. But it's also very important what you said, because I don't want to stay too much uh, with philosophy, but the main thing is that there is a cash flow and a sustainability in financial terms. This is very important. If this happens through sustainability policies, is very important, but if I can be uh, you know, a bit naughty. Absolutely, we have to have an ability to generate income, otherwise it becomes marketing or it becomes an image uh, operation or advertising. But for people who manage credit, this is much less uh, in, of interest. Yes, if I may, um, it is clear that as in every component of this topic, for a company, the main thing is to be able to remunerate their own capital. So if you can remunerate your own capital, then you can imagine to invest in other components by using extra income generated to sustain and support other aspects, particularly in the social world and uh, all those issues that are not directly connected to your core business. So if you are a company that do that as core business, if you operate in the construction world and a reconversion um, to a green construction business because it facilitates the sale of your homes, this is certainly positive for the community, but also for the company, but also for uh, those who give loans to the company because it does facilitate the investors. So this is a key point in these assessments.